Hi all, these are my lecture notes from 229 where I was kind of struggling getting them scanned in at Montclair. They're all scanned in and everything looks very nice. Um, I just want to go through everything again so that it's all compiled in one place. So how do you check whether derivative is correct? We worked on this on the Wednesday of that week um, and this type of question will appear on the quiz on Wednesday after spring break. So wherever the original curve is increasing, f prime must be above the x-axis. Wherever the original curve is decreasing, f prime must be below the x-axis. Realize that I gave some web assignment problems that were for grade that had exactly these type of problems on it. How do you explain it? Well, let me show you in a figure on the next page. Well, it's not really the next page. It's at the end um, where I describe this. So let's look at this. This is a, the solid curve is the original function and the dash curve is the derivative. I've color coded everything so you can see the relationship. This green portion over here, the original curve is decreasing. I know the derivative is correct because the derivative, which is a, a dash below the x-axis, you can see everything's below the x-axis exactly in the portion where the original curve is decreasing. On the other hand, the red portion represents where the original curve is increasing, and you see that the derivative is also above the x-axis in exactly the same region. So this tells me that the derivative is most likely correct. I wanted to show you a second curve, second example. Here's a second example. I color coded it kind of similarly so that you could see everything happening. The solid represents the original curve. The dash represents the derivative. The green here is an increasing region of the original curve and the green dashed is entirely above the x-axis right at the same place where the original curve is increasing. In fact, right where it's flat, the derivative, the dash curve, is striking the x-axis. And then the roller coaster goes down in this red portion right here. And the red portion, which is the derivative, is entirely below the x-axis right in that red region up here where the original curve is decreasing. In fact, where it's flat is exactly where it crosses the x-axis. And finally, the curve again increases. This is the blue. And you see that right where it's flat is where the derivative crosses the x-axis. And now the derivative, the dash curve, is entirely above the x-axis, positive, exactly where the original curve is increasing. So these are two examples of how you would describe um, using arrows and little kind of informational boxes that your derivative is, in fact, got the correct signs in exactly the correct places. I went over some problems that came from the previous uh, midterm, um, kind of getting us ready for the midterm. So here is one where we had to determine whether the limit was convergent or di divergent, and if convergent, find a limit. I rewrote this an as five halves to the n. That was just a habit. But um, I wanted to graph this immediately. So um, the figure is not on the next page, but is at the end. You see that I've graphed it. In all the cases where the, it had a limit, you saw these dots leveling off or plateauing. In this case, it is not doing so. Um, because it's not doing so, we would say that this sequence is divergent. And I do not have to do more. I can see it. And I can see it for the numbers, too. They're just unbounded and getting larger and larger and larger, which is exactly what I'm seeing here graphically. Visually, it's so easy to see. I realize this looks huge because it's 139%. So let me make this 100%. A little bit easier to see everything all at once. So we would say a n, I would say more, it diverges to infinity. That's important to know that it's not just that it's divergent, but also where it's headed to. The second one, um, determine whether the limit of this, func uh, this sequence is convergent or not. We've done this many, many times. Um, we can do this graphically very quickly. Um, and we were supposed to de determine whether it's convergent or divergent. Let me do the analytical first, and then we'll look at the figure. Everybody knows how to do this. You divide by the highest power, which is n squared. We divide through by n squared, and then we get big bottoms go to zero, 
and we get two fourths, which is one half. What do we see graphically? Oh, a plateau close to one half. Or if you want to cover your butt, you'd say somewhere between 0.45 and 0.5, I think it's going to plateau or level off. And I can see that from the numbers. So in this one, it's convergent, convergent to a number between 0.4 and 0.5. And I can get the exact answer with analytics showing that it is exactly 0.5. In this particular problem, the next problem, um, I had to find, ooh, I think a page was out of order. Our page is missing here. We don't have step one. We were supposed to find the derivative of a function. Let me see if I have it somewhere else. I'll have to scan it in. Obviously, I had to find the derivative of a function. Let me see if I can find it for you and just give it to you um, on here. This was actually an important page. I think what I'd like to do is see if it appeared on my Hotmail as a picture. Bear with me here. All right, and this next one, it's a uh, limit of a function where a n was cosine n pi and I had to find that limit as n goes to infinity. I have a graph, hopefully I have it here. If I don't, I need to open that up. So I, I don't really have that one, so let me look at my where I have it in my files. that one. Well, we can just really graph it. It's not that hard to graph. So how you plug this in is you take, um, just like you do before, you put n equals 1, but here you put cosine um, a2 times pi, and the way you enter pi is you put pi with a parenthesis around um, right after it, and that gives you the value. And here we want, as usual, a2 plus 1, and here we want to scroll this down, and we scroll this down, and we find that it never seems to settle on one number. It's bouncing between negative 1 and 1. If we graph that, what you'll find is the way I've shown you that um, you'll get this kind of 
you can't quite see it, but it's definitely not settling down on one number. If I did a plot join, so you can tell it to join the plots together by using line. So um, format data series and then put line style. Let's put um, solid line. What you'll see is it's just, it's not settling down. It's not plateauing. So it's definitely diverging. And what we would say is that it diverges by oscillation. It never settles on one number, but diverges by oscillation. So in all cases, when you have a sequence, you want it to uh, converge. Um, you would want it to settle down graphically. You should see it plateauing or stabilizing at one value. In the case of cosine n pi, it is not doing that. It is oscillating. This problem that was missing, that flagged the missing page, is you were supposed to find the tangent line of y equals 3x plus 2 divided by e to the x, which I pulled from the previous midterm, and that's at x equals 0. The first step is to find y prime. Um, and we do this, this is a rational function. It has a bottom and a top. The bottom is e to the x. The top is 3x plus 2. The derivative of the bottom is e to the x. The derivative of the top is 3. And then you plug it into the quotient rule. Bottom times the derivative of the top minus top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Some of you love to do algebra. Leave it alone. We both don't need to see it. So this, uh, this is how I'm going to leave this particular um, expression. Now going to back to the PDF. That was step one. I now have the derivative. Now I need to find m. I found that by plugging in the x value, which was x1 equals 0, into the derivative formula without simplification, and things turn out to be very nice. e to the 0 is always 1. I get a bunch of zeros. Recall that on my mistakes page, we had a mistake where they forgot to put the parentheses. Keep the parentheses in. It changes the signs. And we get 3 minus 2 over 1 squared, which turns out to be a nice number 1. Um, you know that if I'm in the right mood, I'm not going to make nice numbers, so beware. Y1, uh, step 2 and 3 can be exchanged. Y1 is found by plugging in x equals 0 into the original expression. I get a nice number, which is 2. Then I plug everything into the uh, slope, uh, slope formula. Where I get y minus y1 is m times x minus x1, and um, I'll have a nice looking line like y equals x plus 2. Now you will ask yourself, how could that possibly be right? And it turns out that indeed it is. There we go right there. You see that this is the tangent line I just found. This was the original curve. I graphed them both on the same graph. And in, at, this is x equals 0, where I wanted to get a tangent line. And the curve and the tangent line are indeed 1 right at that point. So there we are. Looks good. So we need to plot, you know, we should probably actually do a plot of the original function and derivative also on the same curve. I'm satisfied with the original one. I just wanted to check if I'm right, and it looks like I am. So I gave some homework. Um, this is all posted on Canvas. Um, there's a figure inside this PDF document, um, and it's titled, uh, the title of the figure is Homework Due March 7th, but it's actually at the end of this document. And um, make those identifications, and we will, we will also work on this. We've worked on this last Wednesday. We can work on this again Monday. Then I gave you some problems off the practice tests and you know, quizzes. You might have some trouble with number three. We'll practice these on Monday when we come back. Um, and then the same directions, finding derivatives. So you've done a lot of this already before. Number four is a little tricky because you can either expand this out by FOIL, that bottom, which makes it quite easy, or you can use the chain rule to find the derivative of the bottom, which makes it might be a little confusing and messy. So there's two ways you could do number four. So I will post this now with uh, the inserted pages that were missing here during my video lecture. And you just let me know if you have any questions.